Hey guys, it is Michael Carter back for another week with Think on These Things. But before we get into our thoughts for this week, if you like this content, give me a like and subscribe to this channel, share it with others. All right, now let's get into it for today. Young, one time, here we go, hear the facts. Hey guys, in these videos, we're talking about your thought life and how it affects the rest of your life. How important are your thoughts? <clears throat> well, science shows that negative thoughts slow down your brain's ability to function, and it actually impedes cognition when you have a negative thought. Dr. Teresa Aubel and Susan Reynolds wrote an article back in 2011. It was called Happy Brain, Happy Life. And in it, they talk about how it's been observed that negative thoughts actually slow down the brain's coordination. Negative thoughts make it difficult to process thoughts or find solutions. They hinder creative, creativity and your creative ability. They decrease activity in the cerebellum. Negative thoughts impact the left temporal lobe. That's the fear factor. That affects your mood, your memory, your impulse control. While conversely, positive thoughts show that synapses, those areas connecting neurons in your brain, they increase dynamically. Positive thoughts increase mental productivity by improving cognition. They intensify your ability to pay attention, to focus, they improve your ability to think and analyze incoming data, and they actually improve your ability to solve problems quicker and enhance creativity. So yeah, your thought life is pretty important. So today, I wanna to talk just a little bit about multitasking. Multitasking, right? The ability to do more than one thing at a time. You know, people pride themselves on the ability to multitask. I mean, I know I did. I, I loved to multitask. It, it made me feel like I was getting more accomplished. You know, I accomplished something. But it's, it's a great in a pinch, but multitasking has a serious downside. David Rock, who's the co-founder of Neuro Leadership, the Neuro Leadership Institute, and the author of this book called uh, Your Brain at Work, he says, Multitasking reduces our intelligence, literally, dropping your IQ. You know, we make mistakes, we miss subtle cues, we fly off the handle uh, when we shouldn't, we spell things wrong, all of those things. So if these are the outer manifestations of multitasking. Think about what's actually happening in your brain when your thoughts are essentially multitasking jumping from one thing to the other. I, I can only imagine the unseen mess <laughs> that we create in our own minds. And to make matters worse, distraction feels great. Your brain's reward circuit lights up when you multitask. This, uh, Dr. Rock says, meaning that that means that you get an emotional high when you're doing a lot of different things at once. And I relate to that. <laughs> So we become addicted to chaos. We become focus averse. We become hooked on the very thing that is actually holding us back. Now, I realize that there are times when we're gonna have to multitask. You know, it just can't be helped. But instead of multitasking all the time, we need to be more intentional. You need to be more intentional about what you're doing and what you're thinking. You need to control your thoughts and have control over them and your focus. Now, I'm a person who believes in dreams. I think that we can make all of the strategic decisions in the world. We can have clear goals and a clear path to get there. But without that dream, without that vision, what is it all for? Think about the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr when he wanted to motivate people, a whole society, to change the world, he didn't say, I have a 10-step plan to get there. He said, I have a dream. 
But I think what we do is we mistake the dream or what really should be called visualization, okay, for a daydream or a fantasy. Your, your brain is so good at picturing that perfect end result that the fantasy can actually trick your brain into thinking that you're already there, that you've already made it. This causes you to be lazy and not work on your goals as hard. What happens is you're giving yourself the satisfaction, okay, or the feeling of accomplishment, but you're not there yet. You see, when you dream, not visualize, you're letting your unconscious mind wander wherever it wants to go. It leads you. There's no consistency, no real path, no real focus. But when you visualize and focus, you're more consistent. You're seeing the process. You're seeing the actionable steps. And it helps. It helps you put your plan into motion and stick to it until you get to where you want to be. You might say, well, that, uh, you know, what does that have to do with multitasking? You're talking about dreams. <laughs> but multitasking does essentially the same thing as fantasizing. But instead of taking you where it wants you to go, like a fantasy might, multitasking simply divides your focus. It puts a strain on your focus. I remember someone once said that unity is strength and division is weakness. And I believe this to be true with your focus as well. Division is weakness. And division of focus can be a crippling weakness. While multitasking makes you feel like you're getting more done, it does. It can be harmful to what you're doing and it can actually hurt you as well. It can, it can set you back. Steve Jobs said, focus and simplicity. Once you get there, you can move mountains. Tony Robbins said that your life is controlled by what you focus on. So the question for you isn't how many things can you get done at one time? Rather, the question is, what are you focusing on right now? All right, that's it for today. So we'll talk more next time about your thought life. Until then, think good thoughts.